skies and rainbows and sunbeams from heaven are all I can see. When my Lord is living in me, I know that Jesus is well and alive today. He makes his home in my heart. Nevermore will I be all alone since he promised me that we never would part. Green grass and flowers all blooming in springtime are works of the Master.
brothers and sisters. Uh, today is a beautiful day, and life is always beautiful by God's grace. And we have all the reasons to celebrate life to the fullest. Our God is victorious each and every moment in our life, as he is always present every single hour to help us. Truly, he is amazing. I personally would like to, to thank the song leaders for their effort and time spent in delivering beautiful music to uplift our spirit. Today also, we welcome our newly baptized brother. His name is, uh, I hope I pronounce it correctly, uh, Xerces Vertudazo, also known as Rex, from the Sarja Ministry who was baptized in Christ last Saturday. To our friends, also visitors who join us in this online service, we thank you also for your presence this morning. It's, it's a joy to us you join today, uh, celebrating God's grace and, and mercy. Remember that God did not rest on the seventh day because he was tired. On the seventh day, God sets an example to us he blessed the day and called it holy, and set the day apart. So I hope that everyone is excited, encouraged, and, and fired up. This is the day that the Lord has made holy and perfect. Set aside our worries and problems behind. Fix our eyes on Jesus Christ, and I'm very sure God will take care of it. In, in Revelation 3, 7, God says, what he opens, no one can shut, and what he shuts, no one can open. So moving onwards to our service this morning, our lineup are as follows. Uh, Paul will, will lead us in the communion message. Uh, we have a guest speaker today from the Lebanon Church of Christ. A brother, Mufed, will share the message. And our very own Arun will do the, the closing. So once again, to all, I personally welcome you to the Friday online service of International Churches of Christ, United Arab Emirates. Let's go to God in prayer. So it's bowed on our head. Our Father in heaven, you are holy, perfect, merciful, and full of grace. We also acknowledge, God, the presence of the Holy Spirit. And God, we cannot do things without this. God, we also, hum also humble and accept ourselves, God, as we are weak, God, and we cannot do things without you. So God, today we pray for guidance. And you may also bless, God, our service today. May this be acceptable to you, Father. Bless the speaker today, God. I, I pray, God, that his, his message will align with us and will give us encouragement, Father, so that everything, God, will, our eyes will be fixed on Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you so much, everything. And I pray the rest of the day in the name of Jesus. Amen. The
Good morning, church. It's a privilege to share with you the communion for today. To our visitors and friends, this is the most important part of our service. At this time, we partake in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, our Lord. And through this, it's showing us what it took for our Lord and Savior, Jesus, for us to be part of his kingdom. Brothers and sisters and friends, I know a lot had suffered throughout this pandemic. A lot is going through each one's mind. And there are things that are not working as planned. But let us remember, we are still here because of the sacrifice that Jesus suffered on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins. We may not notice or feel every time we sin that we hurt the Lord. But this is true. As we go back to the foot of the cross, let us remember to examine our heart and open our minds to celebrate Jesus' triumph over death and our salvation being proclaimed. Let us ponder on the blood that Jesus said on the cross and remind us this word that would shine in us and that would live in us. The Bible says in Luke 22, verse 18 to 20, For I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God has come. And he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it and gave it to them saying, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. On the same way, after the supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which I poured out to you. Brothers and sisters, the meaning of covenant should have the most important meaning as for us as disciples, as Christians, and followers of Christ. Covenant means an agreement which brings about a relationship of commitment between God and His people. Brothers and sisters, as we take the communion, let us take time to absorb God's Word. Put it into practice every single day and celebrate the victory of our Lord Jesus over our sins. Let's go to God in prayer. Father God, we are all humbled to come ask you for forgiveness, as we are not worthy to receive you. We just want to glorify you and thank you for giving us your one and only Son to be sacrificed for the forgiveness of our sins. Thank you for just giving us the strength to overcome the weak as we take the bread that represents your body, strengthen our body, mind, and spirit. And as we drink from the cup that represents your blood, help us to celebrate your victory that you have overcome for us. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.
I look to you I see the scars upon his And hold the truth That when I can't you always can I'm standing here Beneath the shadow of the cross I'm overwhelmed that I keep fighting open arms What love is this That you gave your life for me It made a way for me to know you And I confess You're always enough for me Good morning, everyone. Even as we continue worshiping this morning, I pray that our hearts are looking forward God, to God's word. Uh, thank you, everyone, who's been serving so far. Uh, we really appreciate what we have today, isn't it? The fellowship, to be able to meet together, even if it's uh, online. And uh, we pray for the day when we could really physically meet. It's my pleasure to introduce to us today uh, the speaker for the day. Mufid Tome. Mufid Tome Lee, with his wife, Jesse, leads the, the Beirut Church in Lebanon, and they are also the chairman for the entire Middle East region, which includes the Gulf region too. And uh, it's a joy to be able to share about him. I, I remember the first time I met him when he came down to visit us in Dubai. Uh, visit us means visit the church. And he always had a smile on his face, and he always has a smile on his face. He is somebody who's dedicated his entire life to God's word. He has uh, got a master's in, uh, in uh, I believe, uh, or rather bachelor's degree in theology. Of course, he has certificates uh, in uh, John Maxwell leadership. Uh, he's also a facilitator for I Choose Us, uh, for marriage dynamics, for good enough parenting, uh, conflict dynamics. So he, he's a man with many uh, talents. He genuinely, as I said, he's, given his life over to God's service. You know, what I really appreciate about him personally is his spirit of never saying never. He, uh, they were called into uh, Egypt a few years ago uh, to serve in Egypt. 
and they did go there and uh, it wasn't so easy because eventually they were uh, they were disbarred and there was at least about six months they had to both husband and wife stay separate as even as he tried to get back into Egypt. So we are part of the Middle East region, which is not so easy to be able to continue preaching. But here's a man who has a passion to, to see God's word reach every corner of this region. So uh, we do have another song, uh, but let's prepare our hearts even as we listen to Mufid. Of a change of a scenery when you're like, man, this is not for me. Well, I tell you about a king in misery. He died on the cross, that's right, just for you and me. And you just gotta face the true reality that without him, you're just another man in vanity. Let me give you a moment of clarity that when you're hungry, he's a dad that will give you ease. He'll give you the water that you really need and will give you the bread when you know that you need to feed. He'll always supply you with your righteous need, but when he asks from you, you know that it's never greed. When you go fishing, of course you need a rod. When you got a new gadget, sometimes you need a mile. When you take photos, sometimes you need a pub. But when you live life, you will always need a God. Abba, Yeshua, Yahweh, answer that
Good morning, church. I'm sure you can hear me. Just want to make sure you can hear me. It's great uh, to be with you. It's an honor. Jacob and Bina, thank you for the honor and the invitation uh, to be able to meet the brothers and sisters in the UAE. I know I know most of you, uh, but it's, it's really an honor and a privilege to be able to worship with you this morning. Uh, it's so inspiring and encouraging to hear the songs and all the brothers and sisters that really prepared. I love this rap song. It's, it's new for me, but it's really, it's really encouraging. So uh, uh, God bless you, brothers and sisters, uh, for being able to put all this effort to be able to worship through Zoom, through social media, through uh, Wi-Fi, anything, nothing will stop us to come together as a body, as a kingdom, to worship our Lord. Uh, it's been great. I know it's been maybe two years or three years since, since I visited Dubai. Uh, it was planned just before COVID, but it didn't happen. But hopefully days will come where we can meet again and get to know Jacob and Bina more. We're still getting to know you guys. Appreciate uh, all your efforts. Our, our friends, Bassam and Lama, uh, it's, it's just amazing uh, to share the word of God with you today. Uh, as you see, this is, uh, this is my blessed family, uh, uh, my lovely wife, Jessie, and uh, Andrew, who is 18, and Abigail, she is 15. And thank God they are both disciples, and I pray they stay. Uh, this is our lovely Lebanon and the lovely nature. I'm showing you the nice part now of, of Lebanon with all the challenges, but it's, 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 uh, it's great. I'm so grateful to be able to be blessed with this family. Uh, honestly, it's been a year now, uh, and, and uh, I just want to share with you, you know, this, this pyramid. I'm sure some of you knows it, Maslow's Pyramid. It's been a year now since the world have been challenged with COVID, even a bit more. It's been so hard on so many, uh, 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 you know, health-wise, and not only health-wise, also economical-wise. You look around the world and you see how tough it is on so many of us. I know many of your brother, the brothers and sisters out there in the Gulf have been facing all these challenges with their jobs, with their basic needs, uh, even the fear of health and the fear of death. Many of us uh, and around us lost loved ones, and it's so challenging because we look around and it's, it's been really hard. And we look like, where, what is the solution? And you know, Maslow's Pyramid, it actually shows all the main basic needs of us on earth. You look through them, it goes like, wow, this is what we seek. This is what we want. This is what we, we, we work hard for to achieve. And you look at them today and you see most of them are gone. Most of them are lost. And we are in a situation where fear is striking in our hearts day by day. And you know, fear is tormenting. Fear have many reactions. Either you run or you fight or you just surrender. You know, and this is so hard. And in this situation, so many times when we surrender, we have an enemy that is waiting for us to devour us. When we, when we run, the same thing. But you know what? How can we stay in this tough, challenging times and fight? You know, it's easy to say it, but when it hits home, when it hits personal, when you lose your job, when you lose your, your, your security, when you lose your health, when you lose the loved one, then it makes sense. You know, here in Lebanon, besides all the challenges the world have, you can add about four more challenges on them. I'm not going to count them, but it's been hard. With all the COVID and all the economic challenges, the explosion came on August 4, and, 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 and it destroyed half of the city, which is five minutes away from our house. And we're still actually being affected by this situation. But thank God, God have protected many people and mainly the saints out here, and God have been using the disciples to be able to be a comfort for many. But you know what, when it hits home, maybe today you are facing your health situation. Many brothers 
our dear brothers uh, uh, and sisters in, in, in Jordan now, most of them in the church, uh, Simon and Sammy and their families are going through COVID and let's keep them in our prayers. We, 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 we went through it and it was really hard. So when fear hits, what happens? You know, many things happen, but the first thing that, that really happened, and I will be sharing this with you now, is actually the enemy will strike. You know, the title of the lesson today is how to overcome the enemy. The Bible goes, be alert and sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. We know this. We know this verse very hard. But you know, we know the verse, but how much we are seriously alert on a daily basis that he is around. He is waiting. He is roaring to devour us. That's why the first thing I want to remind myself and remind you, my brothers and sisters, is we need not to forget that he's out there waiting for our weak times, our weak points. He's there when he smells the blood, when we are bleeding, to attack and devour us. You know, <laughs> Satan is so clever to the point that he make his best to make you forget that he's there to make you forget that he is waiting for the weak point to attack. And the Bible goes, be alert. You know, another verse that really is, is, is very dangerous for us to forget. Jesus said, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. What crazy three goals he have. It's so dangerous. The thief, Satan in this hard times, comes only to steal your security, to steal your peace, even the earthly peace, even the earthly and the worldly needs. And you know what? He will kill your living hope and he will destroy your living hope. Brothers and sisters, we need to be, like the Bible said, shrewd like snakes and humble like God. We need to be alert in this situation. And it's tough. It is hard, but you know what? We need to strike back. We need to fight back. You look at these pictures or this picture. These are the baby ravens or the, the, ba or the raven cheeks, as they say. You know what? They are screaming and crying and screaming and crying for food. And you wonder why would they scream and cry for food? Where is the mother? Where's the father? Where's the parents? Why they don't provide? And amazingly, you know, it's amazing how you can relate and connect. You know, Job, in his tough life, Job was facing the challenge as, as we're facing today and even much more. His health was completely gone. His family, he lost his loved one. Even, you know, he lost every physical and earthly security he had and you know during that time he asked one question look what he asked he goes who provides food for the raven when it's young cry out to god and wonder about for lack of food who provides you wonder why would job ask this question why actually he specifically focused on the raven you know why because sadly the raven mother is so selfish that she leaves her babies. She doesn't feed them. She just leaves them. You know, they, they, don't, they don't take care of their babies. This is the nature. We don't know why, but you know what? We can learn a big lesson from them. But how do they survive? How do they live? How do they continue to be really uh, uh, growing and then live their life because if the family if the mother doesn't provide they will all die but they don't die and it's amazingly the bible answers this question look what the bible says about the raven god will provide he provides food for the cattle and for the young ravens when they call wow 
you know, you look at this verse, it was like, okay, I know he, provide, he provides food for all the cattle. But why specifying the young ravens here? Because God knew that the parent, the, the selfish mother won't, will not provide. And you know, if you search it and you go through this, I, I love natural geography. I love to learn so many lessons. And today I'll be sharing about many animals with you. I'm sorry. But you know what? We can learn a lot. And you know, it's amazing when they cry, even the tears that comes out of their eyes, it will go straight to their mouth and it will be food enough for them, for them to live and for them to make it. And you know what? You know, even Elijah, if you remember the story of Elijah, when he was all alone in the desert, when he was out there, you know, praying for God to take him. I'm gone. I'm depressed. I, I lost everything. He is, he feels what we're feeling all today. God, I don't know. Just kill me. I am, I'm alone. I don't have anything. You know what God did? Look what God did. It's amazing. It shall be that you will drink of the brook. And I have commanded the ravens to provide for you there. The ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning and bread and meat in the evening. And he would drink from the brook. And he goes like, what? Excuse me? The ravens, they don't feed their children. The ravens are so selfish to even feed their babies. And here God commanded the ravens. He goes, guys, I know you're selfish. I know you love the meat. They love meat. You know, I know you love food. I know you don't provide for your children, for your cheeks. But you know what? I order you to deliver food twice a day for Elijah in the desert. And you know what? Meat. Imagine the raven that is carrying the meat all the way to Elijah, smelling the meat, smelling the need of this meat because he's so selfish even to give it to his babies. And he wouldn't eat it. He would deliver food for Elijah twice a day. Will he command the ravens today to provide for me and you our basic needs? God will provide. Will he provide a job? Will he provide any need? Because sometimes we look like, God, where is, where is what I want? And you know, we forget what we're saying. I didn't promise you what you want. I promise you what you need. And I will provide your need. And sometimes our level of need, our standard of need is so high. God, you know what? I will provide. Even Jesus, what did he say about that? Look, what did he say? He said in Luke 12, and he said to his disciples, for this reason, I say to you, do not worry about your life as to what you will eat, nor for your body as to what you will put on. For life is more than food and the body more than clothing. Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap. They have no storeroom nor barn, and yet God feeds them. How much more valuable you are than birds, than the birds. Wow. You know, when you put them all together, the raven story and how God used them, and you look at your situation today. We look at the situation in Lebanon and the challenge and the people that they are going through, even the saints and the disciples. It's so hard. It's so hard, even the inflation in our currency. Even if you have a job, the income of your job, it, it, it became nothing. All these challenges. But Jesus is telling us today, you know what? Consider the ravens. I provided for them. You are valuable. How valuable we are in God's eyes. He will take care of you. It's challenging. I know many of you, lost your jobs. Maybe many of you were, were left even the, the country and going through a lot. But you know what? I'm not just speaking to you. I'm speaking to myself and to my country and to my church and to my people. It's been really hard, guys. But what's the option? Fear? Do we surrender for that fear? Do we run? Or do we remember that God will provide our earthly needs because we are valuable. You know, in the same fear, 
of your basic needs and your worldly needs, there's another fear that is hitting us because of the virus, is death. And you know what? We have been losing a lot of loved ones around us here in Lebanon. The country is so small, we're being in total lockdown now since 40 days. Come, we cannot go out of the house just for permission of two hours. The death rate, the COVID rate, it's, it's out of control and we hardly got the vaccines. It's really been tough. Many around us, young people, they've been lo losing their lives. And you know what? When you face death, especially as believers, the first thing comes to your mind, am I ready to face my Lord? Am I ready? Do I have that living hope? You know, this reminds me of the first century church, especially when you read Revelation. You know, the saints in Revelation, they were in the same condition. But what was sure that time, that 99% they will lose their lives. The persecution was so high that they will die. That's why Revelation came to tell them, you know what? I know it's hard. I know it's, it's, it's tough. I know the persecution. You might lose your life. But you know what? I want you to hold on to the living hope, to the crown of life. He didn't even focus on their physical needs because it didn't matter anymore. What mattered was that crown of life. Are you ready? Or you're going to deny your Lord because of fear. And then you lose your earthly life and needs, and then you lose your eternal life. That's why, brothers and sisters, let's face it. We live and we have an expiry date. It's going to come from COVID or from anything, from age. How much are we ready? That's why the Bible is calling us to fight the good fight. Look what Paul said to Timothy when Timothy was completely down. He goes, fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called when you made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. And many of us here, we made this good confession. We were, we were saved. We said, God, you are our Lord. And many were witnessing. And it was a joyful moment. And you know what? We are blessed that, we, that our eyes was open for the truth and salvation. But you know what? During all our life and challenges and this life on earth that is really hard, it's not easy. And never the Bible said it's going to be easy. He always said it's going to be hard. But the promise was always not earthly, but, you know, uh, eternally. What did he say? Two things. Fight. We have to fight in fear. We have to fight for our faith. It's not going to come easy. It's not going to come where we're laid back. It's not going to come. You know, the most dangerous sin that threatens our salvation, it's comfort. It's when everything is okay. It's when the, the job is good, the salary is good, the family is healthy. Everything is okay. We're in control. This is the most dangerous sin. We have experienced this. You go to the first century church. You go to the Old Testament. When everything was fine, they actually forsake God. But when it was hard times, this is where they went back to God. And the same thing with us. He goes, take hold of the eternal life. It's not like, I, I, I'm, I'm a disciple. I got baptized. I'm saved. And you know what? That's it. No. He goes, you're going to stand. And if you stand until the end, you will get it. You will get this crown of life. You know, look in James what he said, blessed is the one who perseveres under trial because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. Wow, what an encouraging promise. You know what? But that promise will not come without perseverance. And when do we persevere? In this time, brothers and sisters. In these hard times, this is where the Bible put our faith to test. This is where the Bible and God put our righteousness to test, to our trust when we say we're willing to follow you in any condition, in any situation. Here it is. 
Here it is. You know, in Lebanon, it's really been hard. But we decided as a church, all our focus will be on reaching out for those who need salvation. And you know, it's been so encouraging just to focus in the church. We are a church of nearly 100. We started this year with 200 Bible studies. You know, it's been a blessing for us. It was, it's overwhelming. But God has been working in so many hearts. And what's amazing is the majority of them are young. Because they look around them, they lost all their security. Even the banking system here is completely down. Everybody lost their money. And everybody's like, okay, there's no more security except in God. The harvest is plentiful. In these times, people are vulnerable to hear the word of God and to change their lives. Because you know what? If we, the children of hope, will not give them hope, who's going to give them hope? Nobody is going to give them hope. You know, you look at this picture. Usually this picture should be the opposite. Many times you see the National Geography, you see a lion is running after these guys. Here, you see these guys, these wolves are running after the lion. What's happening here? What's going on here? You know, and this is so encouraging when we say fight. Fight. How do we fight? Look at the Bible, what it says. He goes, submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. The devil is so happy in this situation. He's doing anything, anything, any need he's taking from you just to be able to get you to a point to give up, to surrender, and to give up your faith and trust in God. But you know what? The Bible says, submit yourself to God. How? You know, these guys, because they decided to be together, they decided to be united, they decided to encourage each other, and to support each other, and to carry each other's challenges and needs, they were able, united, to attack even the lion that is their fear, so he can flee from them. Brothers and sisters, this is the time when we need to submit to God, to be close to the word, to be close to prayer. This is the time where we need to be close to our brothers and sisters, to be able to share our hearts, our challenges, our fears. This is the time where we need to get together to pray as a body of Christ. This is the time where we need to encourage each other because nothing out there is encouraging us. Even Jesus, when he was in this challenging physical time, Satan was brave enough to, uh, to, to challenge him. He will challenge you. He will challenge me. But together, we can resist the devil. Together, we can have him run away from us and flee from us, but we need to submit to God. You know, in, in the end, I just want to share with you this amazing verse, and I love this verse and this illustration. You know, in uh, Isaiah 40, and many of us love this verse, but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. Brothers and sisters, I ask you to soar on wings like eagles. We can. We can do this. You know, look at this illustration. This is a huge, amazing eagle. And you know, on top of this eagle, our lovely raven that we talked about, he is so bold to attack the eagle. He's so bold to, to, to really disturb that eagle. But you know what the, eagle, what the eagle does in this situation? He doesn't actually waste his time turning to attack the raven. You know, it's just a waste of time and waste of energy. You know what he do? He soars. He soars high and high and high. And you know the eagle can really go high. And he reached a point where the raven, you know, can't breathe anymore. And the raven by itself falls down. Brothers and sisters, we are eagles with God. Brothers and sisters, we are eagles together. Brothers and sisters, we are eagles because we have the Holy Spirit. We are eagles. We need to remind Satan 
the devil. We need to remind the sin. We need to remind all the challenges that Satan is using to disturb us earthly and eternally. Remember who you are. You are the son of God. You are filled with his spirit. You're part of his living body. You are an eagle with him. You know what? Just soar. Just fight. Just, you know, just go after this. Just hold on. And all this around you will fall by itself. When you go closer to God, Satan will flee from you. Thank you, brothers and sisters. Good morning, church. It's truly an inspiring message. Um, so thank you, Brother Mufid, for the lesson on how to overcome the enemy. It's always a timely and welcome reminder, one that is regularly needed even for the best of us men and women. We are actually creatures of forgetfulness, and today we are grateful for the reminder you gave us through God's Word. Now, what stood out for me from the message is uh, the, the verse from 1 Timothy 6.12, where it says to fight the good fight. Um, indeed, as um, Brother Mufid had rightly said, it is, the, it is not the earthly battles that we fight, but it is the spiritual battles that we fight that we need to be more concerned about. Uh, and that's why we need God's help. Um, and in the end, it's, it's, it's the thoughts and deeds of us humans that God actually looks at. Uh, and he has said that he would be with us to the end of the age, with me, which means that he's going to provide us with all the ne needed strength and the needed ammunition to be able to overcome whatever battles it is that we are fighting. So Brother Mufid, I just want to say thank you for the message today. Um, I would also like to thank Moliel for the welcome, Kuyapong for the communion on God's covenant and most of the time we don't see them, but there's a lot of stuff going on in the background as well to bring these services to all of us each week. So to all those who are working behind the curtains, thank you as well. Uh, to everyone visiting with us this morning, um, if the Spirit of God has touched your heart, uh, do not harden your hearts and instead let the Prince of Peace enter your lives. A time will come, most certainly, that you will be grateful that you made that choice to allow him to enter your lives. Amen. Uh, now for our weekly announcements, I just need one moment. Next Friday, that's the 5th of March 2021, we will be having our, our bi-weekly podcast on YouTube. Uh, the church will continue with our uh, midweek. It's a church-wide midweek together and that will be on the 2nd of March to learn the guard the gospel series that will be session four and it will be f running from 8 p.m to 9 p.m uh, later today kids kingdom will have their classes in the afternoon uh, so you're requested to coordinate with your respective kids kingdom teachers for the timings and any further details uh, this year we will be collecting our special contribution in the month of october in the first week of october uh, the church aims to help Yemen, Sudan and adopt the Sri Lanka school of hope for the underprivileged kids. Um, we are all requested to set aside our monthly contribution and you may hand it over to our respective FGLs or finance representatives. Uh, let's uphold each other in prayer, especially those who are affected by the virus and for all those who are going through a difficult time. The church is going through a lot of persecution in many parts of the world and we need God's help in overcoming these uh, persecutions. And for the last point, we need to try and stay indoors wherever possible and follow all safety practices in place. Before we move with the closing prayer, uh, there is one more announcement uh, and this is for uh, the sisters. It will be given by Tiffany. Uh, so I would like to call upon Tiffany to the spotlight yes thank you bro um good morning church good morning family so um i just would like to remind everyone especially now that uh march is fast approaching and women's day is coming up so 
we will be having our Women's Day celebration th through Zoom, which will be on March 12. And we will have our visiting um, speaker, Sis Parida Enrile from the Philippines. And we encourage everyone to submit your visitors list or registration. And the due date will be on March 8. So let's all be excited. And let's encourage all our friends out there, sisters, and the colleagues and whoever we can invite for the celebration for our Women's Day. Let's continue to have our devotionals, our prayer and fasting for the success of this event. Thank you. Thank you, Tiffany. Um, let's look forward to that. I think the brothers can support the women by you know, trying and passing on the message about Women's Day to as many uh, women you know in your lives uh, so that they can attend the, uh, the, the, the event. So um, let's uh, now close out with a word of prayer. Let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, uh, you alone are worthy of all glory, all praise and honor, Father. Thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who gave up everything so that we could gain everything, Lord. We thank you for your word, which was given to us through Jesus Christ, Father God. And today we are grateful even for allowing us to gain a deeper meaning of your word through Brother Mufid. Dear Lord, I pray you bless our week ahead and protect us all from the enemy, Lord. May we be strengthened to overcome the enemy of our lives and may we walk in your light all the days of our lives. Lord, I pray that let there be more of you in our lives and less of us, dear Lord. Please guide us and be with us as we go through the remaining of this week. Thank you for everything once again. In Jesus Christ's mighty name I pray all this. Amen. Encourage my soul and let us journey on.